I'm Jimmy Hendrick, and this is episode 131, Corrective Stretch on Empower Your Pattern 2.0. Did you know that there are success patterns to help you receive more? To help you live a better and extraordinary life right now? Well, I'm Jimmy Hendrick, a success, confidence, and thrive coach, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I'm here to help you through these success patterns. Let's go. Okay, this time period is kind of scattered. It's between October of 1996 and February 1997. Okay? Now, here we go. Late October, I get a call from none other than Dr. Jerry Murchison. He says, I want to know if you're considering becoming an officer for the Society of Professional Journalism. I said, I'm sorry, Dr. Murchison, I will not be participating in Society of Professional Journalism anymore. Lord, Jimmy, what's going on? We, we've enjoyed having you here. I'm sorry, Dr. Murchison, but I feel like my career path may, may lie elsewhere. After I hung up the phone, I got discouraged. I called Keith. Jimmy, man, look, if you have to change uh, courses, majors, and college, do it, but pray first before you jump into it. Okay, now, with that, give me a second, and I'll put us in the mood for, for some fast track criticism of our reactive culture and why we need a corrective stretch. All right, guys, I'm gonna lay it on thick here, okay? I'm going to say my piece. No thanks to the news media and social media, we have a problem. Fear, reactivity, negativity, just all over the place. And comparison and drama beyond compare. So you better listen to me and listen to me good, okay? If you are getting into this reactive culture, you need a corrective stretch. And that's something that my buddy Keith was trying to tell me, especially during my nine-month depression from December of 96 until September of 1997. Now, I'm saying this as I'm getting my exercise. I'm telling you, our reactive culture wants to keep you down. It wants to keep you in fear. Okay? Comparison. Negativity. Fear. Drama. That's a big problem. And what you need to do is you need to go mash it. Because if you don't mash it and go back to that corrective stretch, you're going to have serious adversity. And see, my friends, with, with the pandemic and post-pandemic, I'm not even sure what world we're in now because of how reactive our culture is. You know, I'm only preaching it from the bottom of my heart, folks. And who is responsible for all this? The enemy of our souls? The devil? Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I, I, at times, when I'm motivating, I'm preaching. Because I'll tell you this much. I knew what I had to do. When Chris went away to a network marketing convention, I prayed to see what to do. And Heavenly Father said, you're going down to the political science department and changing majors. So the next, next afternoon, class is over, I marched down to the political science department. I think that's around final time. Marched down to the political science department, filled out a change of major request form, Degree plan, blammo, the works. Okay? And so, when, when Keith came back in February, he was like, no, 
Do you remember what mom said around Thanksgiving? I said, yeah, I do. She's right. Your countenance has changed, Jimmy. And, and she'd seen me back in March of 1995 when I was living with Charlie Nation. And it became, uh, things became problematic between me and Charlie. And, you know, she was kind of firm about it, and Keith was kind of firm about it back in 95, that I needed to corrective stretch. See, people in this reactive culture are crying out, change me, change me, protect me, protect me. No, 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 no. What you need instead of change, because change is fickle, my friends. What you need, what you need is a corrective stretch. You need a corrective stretch. Listen to me. Listen to me. Write this down. If you're caving into this reactive culture, you need a corrective stretch. Okay? Learn that. See that. Feel that. Now, we're going to go ahead and have another segment. And it's called Let's meet in the study. Three questions occurred to me on Reddit, on the entrepreneur deal. Hey, can you have all the offer to uh, take it? Now, tells me something. One question is, is a bad business idea, could it still make a good business? Well, yeah, if it's, if it's your passion. If it's something that no one else is doing. See, here's the thing. As entrepreneurs, we have to be creative. Our own brand. Our own, we are our own, like, like Vicki Carpenter Duncan said in the reality TV show, The Keynote. We are our own brand. And our brand is called you. See, I'm doing an exercise I invented called Scripta. It's leg lifts using physical therapy bands. We're our own brand, and our brand is called you. You're your own brand. And so, here's the thing. I agree with Del Toro McNeil once again what he said. The cat don't care, but you have to celebrate your own uniqueness. The way you are right now, Okay. But you see, our reactive culture wants us to be hard on ourselves. Oh, that's a stupid business idea. How do you know? How do you know? If it's your passion, it shouldn't be a business idea. It shouldn't be a business idea. If it's your passion, if it isn't, well, then it is a stupid idea, okay? And here's, here's another question. Is it okay for money to be your only motive for going into business? Uh, uh, here we go again. It's wrong. It's reactive. Alright? And when I say it's wrong and reactive because I agree with several people that I have read up. Robert Kiyosaki and Delo Toro McNeil. They say too many people chase the almighty dollar. Instead of their own almighty destiny. If they know that that business is what they want from the bottom of the heart. Besides just making money. You know, my speaking business for instance. I just don't want to make, a, make money. I want to make a difference. That's why I'm podcasting. Shoot, I might even be podcasting when I'm on the speaking trail someday. But here's, here's something you need to know. A lot of these questions I fear feel are made out of fear. If you think about it, and here's here's the uh, here's another question I thought was kind of reactive. What was the breaking point that made you go down the road to become an entrepreneur? Why do you call it breaking point? Okay, that sounds negative. That sounds reactive, okay? Don't do that. Don't do that. I, I, I'm 
begging at you, all of those of you who are my listeners, you know who you are. You desire more. You desire to live an extraordinary life right now. And I say right now because so many people wait. Well, I just wait, you know, a couple years and I'll be rich and happy, blah, blah, blah. I'll just wait till I get this credential and I'll be happy, blah, blah, blah. But you know, celebrate your uniqueness right now. Okay? Right now. Because I, I don't often do this much meat in the study. And maybe I should do it more often because of some of the questions I've run across. And if any of you have questions, you can email me at empoweryourpattern at gmail.com. It's one word, all lowercase, empoweryourpattern at gmail.com. And if I get it in time, <laughs> some episode, I will go ahead and... I will go ahead and have a let's meet in the study session. Okay, so I found that helpful. Now, we hope that you've enjoyed listening to Empower Your Pattern 2.0. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and become a part, become a citizen of Pattern Realm. Also, we would like for you to share it with Mama Son, Papa Son, and everyone. This is Jimi Hendrix saying, until next time, don't just sit there and take it. Build your dreams so you can take it. Do what others don't so you can be what others won't. Do what others don't so you can have what others can't. Choose, act, and pursue happiness. And God bless you.